Hey everybody, DJM here. This is a solo open door wrestling podcast. Doc and I do these every once in a while since we started doing a podcast together again. And this time around, it's my turn. And I wanted to talk a little bit about something that I just watched. Uh, put on by GCW Game Changer Wrestling and Orange Crush Art. It was the inaugural class of the Independent Wrestling Hall of Fame. And I was really excited when this got announced because I've loved independent wrestling for the last 20 years or so. And I was really excited to see who would be the inaugural class, who would be nominated, and who would be inducting them. And I really wanted to see the speeches that a lot of these wrestlers would do because I love independent wrestling. Uh, I fell into the indie scene maybe sometime around 2001 or so i was reading uh, one wrestling.com at the time and eventually going into pw insider uh, where i would keep up with the independence uh, until around 2003 or so when i started actually buying some ring of honor dvds and the rest is history from there uh, but watching this was really exciting and, and really heartwarming and really satisfying in many, many ways as an independent wrestling fan. And it's very similar to the way that you see a lot of wrestlers that start on the independent scene and then make it to the highest levels in professional wrestling over years and years and years of hard work uh, wrestling. It, it's very satisfying. It's very gratifying as a wrestling fan, when you can see a guy's entire career uh, with this kind of culmination. I've talked about this with Doc before, uh, with some wrestlers who would probably be in the Independent Wrestling Hall of Fame uh, under different circumstances. So this was really exciting. So let's just jump in. After MLJ opened the show, uh, our first inductee was Ruckus from CZW, inducted by, and I love that they actually used his old nickname, the original player from the Himalaya, Sanjay Dutt. Now, Sanjay recently joined All Elite Wrestling AEW as a producer, or agent, if you will, after working with WWE for uh, a period of time in the same position. And he had said that this is his first time being in front of an independent wrestling crowd in many, many years. Uh, Sanjay's speech for Ruckus was very personal and very funny. And you could tell that the two of them have known each other for a really long time. They were really good friends. And that's another thing about the independent wrestling scene. And I think this has come out a lot recently with the AEW, WWE competitive thing that some people might have going on in their minds is that a lot of these wrestlers, they're all friends, and they've all known each other for years and years and years, and they're all, for the most part, rooting for each other to do well and make a living doing professional wrestling, because that that's what you want for every wrestler. You want them all to be able to earn a living entertaining us fans. And seeing how close Sanjay was with Ruckus over the years was just really, really cool. Uh, Ruckus, in his own right, is an independent icon and a CZW legend. Uh, Sanjay described it best when you saw this overweight black dude doing the most innovative athletic stuff that you'd ever seen. Um, it was before Kota Ibushi, it was before Will Ospreay, it was around the same time of Amazing Red, who I'll talk about a little bit later, and while just being himself the whole time, and it was really cool to see Ruckus, uh, especially in CZW, and especially on the independent wrestling scene, with Blackout and how some guys would break out from there. And Ruckus was always the dude that was the constant there. And of all people, it was John Zandig that gave Ruckus a shot. And that grew from there. And Ruckus had a brief period in Ring of Honor as well as 
part of the Vulture Squad. And that that was really cool, too, to see him finally really get a, a bigger, prominent spot like that. But he was always one of those dudes in indie wrestling that everyone knew and everyone respected. And the Razzle Dazzle was one of the coolest things you'd ever seen. Uh, he was, in many ways, a contemporary of Amazing Red and, and young Jack Evans and just doing taking the idea of flips, uh, which is always a hotly contested topic in, in pro wrestling, he was taking those flips and doing them in a way that few people were at the time, and well-deserved for Ruckus. Absolutely well-deserved. Uh, the next inductee was someone that I've also been a fan of for a very, very long time, and that was Lufisto. Uh, inducted by Lenny Leonard, the announcer and commentator for uh, many different promotions. Uh, Lenny Leonard did a fantastic job. He gave a great, great induction speech for Lufisto. Uh, if you do check this out, and it is free on YouTube, by the way, uh, I highly recommend that you watch Lenny Leonard's induction speech and Lufisto's speech of her own. Now, Lufisto, way back when, was known as the Super Car Hardcore Anime uh, because she was one of, if not the, first woman on the independent scene to not just do intergender wrestling on the regular, uh, but she was a woman that was doing hardcore deathmatch wrestling everywhere in the United States and in Canada. Um, it was pretty much her and... The one that Lufisto mentioned, Mickey Knuckles out of IWA Mid-South. And Ian Rotten, for for all of the stories you hear about him, he got a lot of mentions and recognitions through this entire thing. Uh, but back to Lufisto. Um, she was a great wrestler very early on who was willing to do anything and everything. And she did. She absolutely did. Um, she was not afraid she wouldn't be stopped by anybody or anything or anyone and Lenny Leonard really highlighted just how influential she was and just how good of a wrestler she was uh, she wasn't just the first she was also very very good and she was someone that everyone respected and, and had to and her speech was absolutely phenomenal uh the best comparison I might make for Lufisto when it comes to independent wrestling is someone she mentioned herself, and that was Medusa, a.k.a. Alundra Blaze. She was a, a trailblazer for women in independent wrestling, and her speech absolutely should be listened to from start to finish, and that includes Lenny Leonard's intro. Moving on to the next induction, it was, I think this is the one that maybe a lot of independent wrestling fans really got excited for, uh, well-deserved in my opinion, uh, inducted by Chris Dickinson, who for one night was basically every wrestling fan. He was as much a fan as anybody else, the way he was talking about Homicide. And his induction into the Hall of Fame was really, really great. Um, I think that you could probably say, as far as the New York independent wrestling scene goes, Homicide is Terry Funk. He is just the Lord God of New York independent wrestling. And he is. Like, all of the dudes that came out of New York... Eddie Kingston, Low Key, Amazing Red, uh, the SAT, the list goes on and on. A lot of those dudes look up to Homicide in such a way that it is just a level of reverence that my first thought was, like, he's Terry Funk in the New York indie wrestling scene. Just he is, he is most high, <laughs> literally, sometimes. But Homicide's wrestling career was really something to behold because he did it all. He could brawl. He could do hardcore. He could go to Ring of Honor and roll on the mat with the likes of Brian Danielson and Samoa Joe and Nigel McGuinness. And 
he would have a great tag team. He had a faction, the Havana Pitbulls, where we saw a young Rocky Romero and Julius Smokes. He he gave the wrestling scene Julius Smokes as his manager. Uh, moving on to TNA, where it was LAX, him and Hernandez, and just the fantastic run he had in TNA. Uh, he's one of those guys that is a legend without ever having to make it to WWE. And... Homicide really is uh, a legend, and this is deserved. Um, Was never a great talker, as he admitted when he gave his speech, but you could tell that he was really, really, he was really proud of the accomplishments and and getting recognized and the award that he got for it. Um, It was also great to hear CM Punk heckling Homicide in the crowd. That was just funny because... For for years, those two were were really tight back in the day of of Ring of Honor way back when. Um, I don't know. Homicide might have been kind of relaxed, if you know what I mean. But he seemed to be pretty happy about getting recognized as as a Hall of Famer. Uh, last but not least, Eddie Kingston. And yeah, who who doesn't love Eddie Kingston? If you saw him and Homicide in the NWA, it was short lived, but it was still a lot of fun. Uh, the next induction was courtesy of Spider Nate Webb, who did not get his entrance theme played, uh, but he inducted Tracy Smothers. Now, I was honestly not too familiar with Tracy Smothers, but I always knew him as a wrestler's wrestler. He was someone that every wrestler absolutely loved, and you heard stories about Tracy being a guy that wrestlers were always there for, and he was always there for him, and he wrestled a bear, and as Chris Hero said, who accepted his award posthumously, he wrestled three bears, and I know that Tracy Smothers was a Territories guy as well, and I do remember him from ECW as part of the Full-Blooded Italians, which at the time made no sense at all because it was Tracy Smothers, but he was someone that always knew how to be an entertainer. He he really knew how to do that, and he was definitely one of those wrestlers that you could say he wouldn't do anything, but the crowd loved every second of it. And uh, as some of you know, I, I appreciate Jeff Jarrett a lot, and I, I understand what it means to go out there and work the crowd and not do anything. And by all accounts, that's what made Tracy Smothers so beloved to wrestlers especially. And Chris Hero, I know a lot of people were happy for him. Uh, he'll be inducted someday as well. I think Chris Hero is probably going to be on that list of people that will be inducted into the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame and, and well-deserved, in my opinion. And speaking of well-deserved, uh, this one is a personal hero of mine. Uh, Dave Prezak, uh, who was inducted by this guy, I, I don't know, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of him, Phil something, I don't know. <laughs> it was CM Punk. CM Punk inducted Dave Prezak into the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame. Uh, those two go way, 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 way back. Um just because of my understanding of the Midwest independent wrestling scene, uh, to know that it was Dave Prezak, CM Punk, Colt Cabana, Ace Steel, Chucky Smooth, and Adam Pierce. Uh, yes, that Adam Pierce uh, that broke out of the independent wrestling scene, uh, specifically in Chicago and out of the Midwest. And Dave Prezak was the guy that did everything except wrestle, even though he was trained. He refereed, he did commentary, he did ring announcing, he he put shows on, and eventually he became the lead play-by-play voice for Ring of Honor. And him and Lenny Leonard called many of the great Ring of Honor matches throughout their history. Um, later on, he founded Shimmer Women Athletes, which is the women's independent promotion that influenced so many women in professional wrestling today. 
it's it's impossible to name the the number of names that worked at Shimmer at one point. Uh, j- just to keep in mind, if there is a wrestler uh, that you like in the last decade, chances are she went through Shimmer, and Dave Prezak probably booked them. And now he's the current play-by-play voice for GCW. Um, my dream was always to be a play-by-play guy. I never really cared about being a wrestler. I wanted to be a play-by-play guy. And Dave Prezak was someone who showed that you can be a part of the wrestling community and be a part of wrestling business without having to go to a billion dollar corporation to do it. And I I, I really respect him for that. I, I really respect him. And I, I think that he was clearly one of those guys that was very humble about the work he's put in because he knows what the wrestlers go through better than most people. And he made sure to thank everybody else. Uh, even when homicide was heckling him and, and heckling CM Punk earlier, but it was, it was all in good fun. Uh, I personally popped for MapQuest because yes, printing out directions on MapQuest was definitely a thing. Uh, if you didn't have a, a Garmin GPS, you were printing out directions on MapQuest. Uh, but Punk really put it well uh, that Dave Prezak is Johnny Appleseed. He planted a lot of different seeds for the independent wrestling crew scene, and they, they have grown into something very, very big, and I absolutely believe that Dave Prezak is a guy that deserves all of the flowers, all of the flowers. So uh, to Dave Prezak, Big, big shout out. He's he's a personal hero of mine as far as pro wrestling goes. So cannot cannot applaud Dave Prezak enough. Uh, but last in this, and certainly not least, was the former, and I do believe the only man to hold the ECW world title and the Ring of Honor world title, Jerry Lynn. And yeah, this was this was so cool. And he was inducted by his old dance partner, uh, sort of. Uh, Another one from the Minnesota wrestling scene, Sean Waltman, a.k.a. X-Pac. As both Sean and Jerry mentioned, uh, they were two of the first small guys to break out in professional wrestling in the 90s, where it really wasn't a place for smaller guys to go. There wasn't a cruiserweight division. There wasn't a junior heavyweight division. There wasn't those kinds of things. But Jerry Lynn and Sean Waltman and later on Reckless Youth were the the types that were doing what Tiger Mask and Dynamite Kid were doing in, in the 80s. And that they were just, they were putting on these awesome athletic matches and getting themselves booked just because they were so damn innovative and so good and so exciting to watch wrestle. Um, eventually, uh, even though he was in and out of WCW as JL, he, he had the purple mask on, uh, and we'll get back to that in a second, uh, eventually Jerry Lynn made his way to ECW, and he was great there. Uh, I think if you're a wrestling fan of a certain age, you remember the matches that Jerry Lynn had with Rob Van Dam in ECW for the television championship. And those were, those were really amazing. And ECW always had the reputation of being hardcore and risque, but there was always really great professional wrestling there. And Jerry Lynn and Rob Van Dam really brought it, and it, it was it was really something. Um, but even then, later on, NWA TNA uh, at the very beginning, it was AJ Styles, Amazing Red, and Jerry Lynn, and also Low Key, who I think will probably get inducted as well. That really made the X Division really special in the very beginnings of NWA total nonstop action. And he, he was a star there as well. Uh, eventually getting to ring of honor. Um, I, I've 
distinctly remember that there was a promo that Jerry Lynn did. It was not long after the Darren Aronofsky film came out, The Wrestler, um, about the, the fictional wrestling character Randy the Ram Robinson. And Jerry, at the time in Ring of Honor, he was one of the older guys on the roster. But he said, like, very loudly, I'm not Randy the Ram. And he eventually won the Ring of Honor world title. He was he was really good in Ring of Honor, even though he was, at that point, a little older than the rest of the roster. He was, he was very, very good. And it was a, a great, great moment to see him as Ring of Honor world champion. And back to JL. For those of you out there that li- like a good clip and like a good meme from WCW and, and you like just hearing Dusty Rhodes on commentary, uh, you've probably heard the famous, he got a bicycle clip from Dusty Rhodes on WCW Saturday night, the mothership. Uh, that was Jerry Lynn. Uh, it was, in fact, uh, Big Bubba Rogers, a.k.a. Ray Trailer, a.k.a. the Big Boss Man, who found a bicycle somewhere in the Turner Studios on Saturday night, and he went after JL, Jerry Lynn, uh, with the bicycle. And just just the fact that he's a part of wrestling meme history it further cements Jerry Lynn's legacy and his speech was really really well done his speech was really nice uh Jerry Lynn as most of you probably know now works as a producer and coach for All Elite Wrestling and he's talked about with the highest esteem by everybody in that company and every other company out there and Jerry Lynn is absolutely one of those guys that deserves this level of recognition and and praise. Uh, so overall, I loved this. I loved the Independent Wrestling Hall of Fame. I, I have a very strong connection to independent wrestling over the last 20 years. And that's one of the big things that I like about AEW so much is that it is, in many ways, a Ring of Honor slash Independent Wrestling Hall of Fame or, or reunion show where you're seeing people on Dark or Elevation or on Dynamite whose wrestling careers took them everywhere and now they're being respected for it and it's not being erased from history. And I love that. And I love that now indie wrestling has a platform and has a history uh, not unlike the territories, not unlike Memphis, where we can talk about the Indies and have history and have stories. And I'm hoping that next year GCW puts another one of these on. And I managed to cobble together a list of professional wrestlers that I would like to see inducted. And before I go, I'll run this list down and we'll do the business. Uh, first of all, Reckless Youth, Tom Carter. I think that in many ways he was the very first, quote, internet darling, unquote, Reckless Youth, Tom Carter. Number two, Christopher Daniels. And Eddie Kingston said it on Twitter. If you wanted your wrestling promotion or your wrestling tournament to be taken seriously, you would book Christopher Daniels and... His career speaks for itself. Uh, number three, Amazing Red. I think that if you have seen how even Will Ospreay holds him in such high regard, you've probably figured out just how influential Amazing Red is. Um, another guy uh, coming from the UK, Jody Fleisch. Jody Fleisch. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, look him up. He's still going. There are a few British wrestlers that I think would belong on here. Jody Fleisch and Doug Williams being at the top of the list. Also, Super Dragon. I'm not sure he'd ever accept the induction, but I think he deserves it. I think Super Dragon definitely deserves uh, kind of a Hall of Fame nod for his contributions to professional wrestling. Sexy Eddie. From Quebec, I think that we all, all us indie fans that appreciate hardcore wrestling and appreciate 
any wrestler that came out of the Montreal scene or, or anyone from Quebec uh, will know that Sexy Eddie is probably deserving of being in the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame. And last but not least, Mischief. Uh, Mischief was a star of Shimmer and one of the first stars of the Women of Honor uh, way back when. And I think that she would be one that I know Lufisto would be more than happy to induct as well. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my little nostalgia bit on the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame. Uh, now, in the year 2022, I feel like I'm the, the grumpy old guy when it comes to the indies. And, and now that I'm, I'm talking about the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame, it, it feels like now I, I have a Hall of Fame that I can talk about. Uh, because... The Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame is very clinical and very numbers-based and very, very analytical. And that's usually not how I do things. That's just not how I operate. The WWE Hall of Fame, whatever. It's pretty much if Vince McMahon likes you and wants to recognize you. That's how the WWE Hall of Fame goes. But for the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame... It feels like something that I have a personal connection to, and I like that now. Um, Yes, I am a little older now. I'm not the young internet wrestling nerd that I was. I'm I'm an older internet wrestling nerd. And seeing that a lot of these guys and girls that I've watched for many, many years get recognized like this, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I like it a lot. So shout out to GCW. I'd love to see this again next year. Thank you all for listening. I'm DJM. Support the show at Open Door Rest Pod. Follow us. You can follow me at Call Me DJM, where I talk about all of my other stuff, including my other podcasts. Uh, follow the Subtle Doctor at the Subtle Doctor. Send us an email at Open Door Rest Pod at gmail.com. Let me know what you think of this little solo episode. Did you watch the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know. Let's go. Thank you for listening, and until next time, I don't have a catchphrase.